Welcome to the SCP Foundation. I am 05-4 and today you will be briefed on SCP-047. Let's go ahead and begin. Item number SCP-047 Object Class Keter Special Containment Procedures SCP-047 is to be contained in a 0.5 meter by 0.5 meter by 1 meter hermetically sealed storage box at all times. This box is to be locked in storage locker 047 Alpha inside P3 Secure Biohazard Lab 047 Bravo. Any entrance to and activity inside 047 Bravo will be recorded by biometric scan, closed circuit camera, and redacted. Entry to 047 Bravo requires the authorization of the project manager in addition to at least one 05 level clearance. SCP-047 is to be treated as a Priority 4 contagious biohazard in all protocols, including mandatory quarantine if exposed. Suite Quebec 047 has been provided adjunct to Lab 047 Bravo for this purpose. In the event of outside contamination of SCP-047 TAC-1, Lockdown Protocol 047 TAC-01, your Senia must be engaged. Description. SCP-047 is a heavily rusted breached gas cylinder made of an iron redacted alloy. When exposed to open air, the material of the cylinder evaporates slowly, producing a previously undocumented mutagenic gas. This gas has no effect on eukaryotic organisms, for example humans, but profoundly alters prokaryotes, showing preference for common human microbiota the natural microorganisms that live on the skin and throughout the body. On rare occasions, these mutations produce a superbug, collectively known as SCP-047 TAC-1, a natural commensal with enhanced survivability and, therefore, opportunistic pathogenicity. The pattern of changes induced by SCP-047 suggests that these highly infectious microbes are, at least to some degree, selected for. Although the specifics of SCP-047 TAC-1 species are dependent on the base bacterium from which it is derived, there are several characteristics which appear to be generally consistent across all cases of SCP-047 TAC-1 mutation. Enhanced survivability in the bacterium's natural environment and similar environments, full-spectrum antibiotic resistance, increased reproduction rate and consumption of available material, Development of sporulation ability in gram-positive bacteria. Increased ability to uptake, hold, and share plasmids, particularly in gram-negative bacteria. Increased transmission due to the traits described above. SCP-047 TAC-1 samples are normally debilitating and virulent. However, compared to other Keter-class SCPs, it should be noted that SCP-047 TAC-1 have a relatively low mortality rate due to their action through mundane biological pathways. Several strains of bacteria have been selectively mutated by SCP-047. Mutation of bacteria in culture is possible, but the process appears to be much more effective with bacteria living on a human host. Generally, mutation of natural commensals for experimental purposes is encouraged. After the containment breach of 30-01-2010, see Incident Report Yersinia 04701-2010, mutation of already pathogenic species is banned and all existing samples must be destroyed. Three particular species of SCP-047 TAC-1 mutated bacteria are of note due to their involvement in the containment breach of redacted. Propionii bacterium 047 TAC alpha is a strain of Propionii bacterium acnes mutated by SCP-047. Pathogenicity. Severe skin colonization around sebaceous glands, modification of skin pH to levels that become toxic to skin cells, massive inflammation and immune cell infiltration, eventual breakdown of skin structure leading to sepsis. Transmission. Transmitted by skin-to-skin -skin contact. Can remain active on inorganic surfaces for up to five hours. Lethality. Approximately 40% mortality rate. Runs its course in two to four weeks. Very visible symptoms within five to ten hours. Contagious within two to five hours. Handling. As soon as visible symptoms form, victims must be quarantined. 
deceased victims should be incinerated. Streptococcus 047 tac charlie is a strain of Streptococcus mitis mutated by SCP-047. Pathogenicity causes inflammation of the mouth and esophagus initially, leads to open sores in the mouth, which result in S047 tac charlie entering the bloodstream and becoming septic. Death is usually due to infectious endocarditis. Transmission. Droplet. Can remain active indefinitely by sporulation. Lethality. Approximately 35% mortality rate. May become a recurring chronic condition if non-lethal. Handling. Subjects with any sign of mouth infection should be quarantined. Deceased victims should be incinerated. Clostridium 047 tac alpha is a strain of Clostridium difficile mutated by SCP-047. Pathogenicity Unknown C-047 tac alpha was developed from tissue culture and has never been exposed to a human. No samples remain in foundation control. Transmission Unknown Presumably transmitted through fecal contamination, as with C. difficile, Due to smaller, more robust spores, may also aerosolize with flatus. Effects of aerosol intake of C047 tac alpha cannot be predicted. Lethality. Unknown. Presumed extremely high risk of destruction of endothelial lining of gastrointestinal tract, leading to inflammation, sepsis, toxic megacolon. Handling. Until further research has been done, victims should be quarantined and placed under 24-hour medical observation to develop functional diagnostics for this strain. Deceased victims should not be incinerated until adequate etiological research has been performed. Recovery Log 047. SCP-047 was recovered from site-redacted secure laboratory by a Foundation biohazard recovery team in response to a full compromise situation on redacted. Testing logs indicate that the research team was attempting to contain redacted in a class redacted SCP stable pressure cylinder, which led to redacted combining with redacted. A full molecular biological analysis of this is available in redacted. The initial release of gas when SCP-047 was structurally compromised was sufficient to cause a microbiota bloom of uncounted species of SCP-047 TAC-1 killing all staff in the lab within redacted hours. Exposed site redacted staff obeyed standard foundation quarantine slash containment protocol and the infection was contained successfully. All right, and that concludes your briefing on SCP-047. Let's go ahead and take a look at incident report Yersinia 047-TAC-01, which occurred in 2010. SCP involved, SCP-047. Description. On the 30th of January, 2010, at approximately 0300 hours, storage locker 047 Charlie, site redacted lab 047 Bravo, containing bacterial samples mutated by SCP-047, was compromised after a complete simultaneous dead expunged, leading to failure of security measures in the area. Three samples, of a total of 12, were stolen. Data expunged since the initial containment break. Outbreaks of one of the stolen bacterial strains, Propionibacterium 047-TAC-alpha, were recorded globally in communities of increasing size and population density. Further information on stolen material, spread, and containment follows. Compromised items. Propionibacterium 047-TAC-alpha, Streptococcus 047-TAC-charlie, and Clostridium 047 TAC Alpha. See SCP 047 for further information. Outbreak information. First outbreak P 047 TAC Alpha. On the 27th of February 2010, Siberia. Contained. See incident report P 047 A TAC 03 TAC 2010. Second outbreak P 047 TAC Alpha. On the 30th of March, 2010, Northwest Territories, Canada. Contained. See Incident Report P047A, TAC 04, TAC 2010. Third Outbreak, P047 TAC Alpha. The 29th of April, 2010, South Australia. Contained. See Incident Report P047A, TAC 05, TAC 2010. Fourth Outbreak. 
P047 TAC Alpha, the 27th of May, 2010, Mato Grosso, Brazil. Believed contained, see Incident Report P047A, TAC 06, TAC 2010. Warning, agents in the area are advised to familiarize themselves with the symptoms of P047 TAC Alpha and be on the lookout for possible infection. Fifth outbreak, P047 TAC Alpha, the 26th of June, 2010. Redacted Iraq. Site immediately then expunged, which is believed to have contained the infection. Access to incident report denied without 05 clearance. Sixth outbreak, P047 TAC Alpha. The 26th of July, 2010, Cameroon. Quarantine enacted. Efforts to track outgoing civilians underway. Infection not contained. See Incident Report P047A, TAC 07, TAC 2010. Seventh outbreak, P047A, the 24th of August, 2010, Dalarna, Sweden. Quarantine enacted, believed contained. See Incident Report P047A, TAC 08, TAC 2010. Warning, agents in the area are advised to familiarize themselves with the symptoms of P047 TAC Alpha and be on the lookout for possible infection. Eighth outbreak, not recorded, believed to have taken place in North Korea. Data expunged, agents with government access are attempting to gain access to parallel information, but due to data expunged, Local services have been extremely uncooperative. Containment status unknown. Ninth outbreak, P047 TAC Alpha, the 23rd of October, 2010, South Carolina, United States of America. Quarantine enacted. Efforts to track outgoing civilians primarily successful. One civilian in a pickup truck is believed to have that expunged. Infection not contained. Resolution. Reports from data expunged indicate no further outbreaks are believed likely, but agents are advised to be on the lookout for new flare-ups resulting from uncontained civilians in previous outbreak regions. These may continue for years to come due to P047 TAC Alpha sporulation. Investigation into the cause of the initial compromise is underway. Anyone with useful information may anonymously contact security via the attached form. And that concludes your briefing on Incident Report Yersinia 047-TAG-01 that occurred in 2010. Remember, we secure, contain, and protect. We die in the dark so that they may live in the light. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, uh, subscribe, and ring the bell if you'd like to see more. If you didn't enjoy this video, go ahead and leave a comment as to why. Uh, please try to keep your comments uh, constructive if you can. And, well, thank you so much. Have a good rest of your whatever.